Hi, welcome to Teen Pride Book Talks. My name is Lucy and this is the program on AADL TV where each episode I just take a few minutes to tell you about a young adult book that is representative of and inclusive of folks in the LGBTQIA community. The book that I'm going to be talking about today is nonfiction. It's a memoir and it's called From Here by Luna Mufla. And this is the story of Luma, who is from Jordan. She comes from a very privileged family, grew up in Amman in Jordan, and eventually came to the United States as a refugee. The reason for her leaving her country and coming here was because she is gay. The book begins with Luma talking to her own children about their grandparents and wondering how to explain the disconnect that she still has with her father a little bit and the reason why her children don't know their grandfather very well. And then she goes back in the book to her childhood in the 1980s and she came, as I said, from a very privileged family. They had connections to the King of Jordan and the path for her was going to be grow up, get married to someone that her parents picked and become a mother. She realized as a child that she was attracted to other girls and this is not allowed in her culture at all. It's against the law. And because it's so much not a part of where she comes from, she doesn't even realize that it's something that people experience or that other people might be experiencing. She can't stand this about herself. She really wishes this wasn't the case. She just wants to feel like everyone else does because she doesn't know that there's anybody in the world that feels this way. Yet something about her existence and her daily tasks, even of being forced into this life as a girl growing up in Jordan, just do not feel right to her. She talks about crushes that she had in elementary school. And then she talks about this experience she had in a ballet class where she just felt so out of place, even in her body. I'll just read you a little part from that. The feeling I had in ballet, that my skin was on backward, I started feeling it all the time. Like what people saw on the outside was not who I was on the inside. Like I had been given a dark secret to hold on to, and if people knew, they would hate me. I wouldn't get picked for teams, invited to parties. I'd probably not even be cast as a camel in the school play. That is a feeling that persists for her, so much so that she can't see a way to exist in her life. She can't see a way for her to live married to a man, having to consummate that marriage and have children. But she knows that she cannot live as a lesbian in Jordan. She does try to end her life and she realizes that she has to find a way out of Jordan. One of the many conflicts in this book for Luma is that she loves Jordan. This is her home and she loves her family. Everything is family. It's emphasized in her culture and she's very close to her family. So she doesn't want to leave but she has to leave to survive. The way that she gets out is by applying to schools in the US, which her parents finally allow her to do. She ends up going first to Hobart and William Smith, and that's not a great fit for her. She ends up at Smith College in Massachusetts, hoping that that will be more of a place for a queer woman, for an Arab, and also for a Muslim. She soon finds out that the Muslim community there isn't as open as she expected it to be, and that there are certain parts of Islam that are never really going to sync for her with who she is. So she learns a lot at Smith. She gains new insights into into being queer, into being Muslim, into being Arab. And she knows that the U.S. is someplace that she'll have to stay at when she gets out of college. So she doesn't really know how to do that. She learns that she can seek asylum in this country for being a lesbian because she will get executed if she goes home to Jordan. So that's a process that she begins to work on. Her family is so well connected in Jordan that they are able to use the FBI to search for her. She has to find a place of refuge here in the United States while she's applying for asylum. She spends time in Atlanta. A friend from college takes her there. She ends up working at a diner and that experience is so vastly different from anything she's experienced in her life at home, in her life thus far in the US. So she gains a lot of new perspectives there. She learns about a different kind of work, about what she might wanna do going forward. And it's just part of the path of seeking her place. This book is 
a coming of age, but it's unusual in its path because Luma is struggling not only with her sexual identity, with her queerness, but with so much about her culture and with where she can belong. The difficulty of having to leave the family that she loves in order to be herself. And you see this in the book because she is telling us her story. And this conflict and struggle really is shown in the book through the way that Luma describes them, but also never vilifies the region that she comes from or an entire group of people. You understand how important her family is and how important their love is. You learn a lot of the cultural details of her life in Jordan. You see some of her family relations, particularly she has a very close, warm relationship with her Syrian grandmother who really does love her unconditionally. And that's one of the parts of the story that I love. It was also a bright light in this book that does have some dark moments. One way that they connect is through food. And there's a lot in this book about food and the importance of food as a way to connect with your home, with your family, with your background, with where you grew up, but also with new people as exemplified by working at the diner. So there's this real connection in cooking. And as a coming of age story, this book can be relatable because we see through Luma's stories and accounts of, of what happened, how there were moments for her that were terrifying. She witnessed things that were violent. She felt isolated living in her own country and she just felt vulnerable in so many ways. As an example of the story of a refugee, it shows how there are many, many reasons why people have to leave their homes, even when they don't wanna leave their homes often when they don't wanna leave their homes, how difficult it can be to do that for emotional and physical reasons, but also the difficulty of then finding the new place to live because of restrictions and, and because of the idea of accepting that this is now your home. Luma Mufla is now known for uh, something called the Fuji's Family, which is an organization that she founded that has built a network of schools in the US that are devoted solely to teaching refugees and English learners. And she has done this because she understands the importance of breaking down cultural barriers and that how real communication and real belonging will never happen without those barriers being broken down. And though the story starts with Luma talking about her life as a wife and a mother, she's talking to her children. She doesn't talk much in the book about her married life. She doesn't talk very much about being a mother because this is a story solely of her identity, of her struggles and her journey to realize who she was and what she went through. She obviously adores her family and she does end the book as sort of a letter to her children, what she wants to tell them about herself now. Also how what she has gone through has informed their lives and how it makes her the mother that she is and how it will make them the children that they are. This connection with her nuclear family, with her family here, really does bookend the memoir nicely. It sort of encapsulates it. And ultimately what this book shows us is the importance of telling stories, even when they're difficult to tell, even when they speak of struggle, that there also might be bright moments in that, but that without sharing those stories and passing them on, it's hard for connections to be built at all. I really loved reading this book. There were some difficult parts to read, but there were also some really beautiful, hopeful parts as well. And I learned a lot and I would recommend that you give From Here a try.